Hello, hello, my dear friends. I'm looking forward to sharing with you the word of the Lord. Hello, my dear friends. Welcome. Welcome to tonight's broadcast. Welcome to the sharing of the word. This is the word of the Lord. And the topic is. The year of visitation. The year of visitation. Are you excited? This is the year of vis visitation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you ready? Okay. I'm not going to wait too long. I'm going to start praying. And uh, we'll see who else will join me. Hello, Tisha. So good to see you, my dear sister. So good to see you. I love you. I'm looking on my cell phone. I'm looking, looking, looking to to see um, to see you and those that are joining. I'm excited. Praise the Lord. Okay, I was trying to share it somewhere, but couldn't do it. But I did it at prophetic community. So anyhow, I'm not going to wait any longer for some reason i cannot see much information i think i see the comments i see you hello tisha okay so i am excited the topic tonight is the word of the lord for 2024 the year of visitation so father in the name of jesus we come before you by the precious blood of our lord jesus christ i ask father let your mysteries be revealed unto us. Let your word be deposited in our hearts. Let our ears be attentive to your word. Help us to receive your word and hear your word and be doers of your word. And let us reap a harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we take hold of that that you will release tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus, we love you. And we ask God that you cover us in this broadcast, in this message, with your Holy Spirit, with your presence, with your anointing, with the impartation of the Shekinah glory, the Kabbalah glory, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the visitations, the divine setups that you have for us, God. We receive them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask, Father, that you release your holy angels now to begin to minister to every one of us and those that will hear this word in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I thank you for the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit that you're giving us to fight together with this prophetic word that you will give us. And we glorify you, God, because victory and joy are ours. And so I ask that you have your way tonight, that you speak through me and that you release exactly that that you desire to accomplish tonight father prepare our hearts and send your holy angels to bring in the people that are to hear this message through me in jesus mighty name amen and amen blessed be the name hallelujah can you hear me clearly hallelujah hallelujah so i'm going to start I'm going to start. So this is the year of visitation. As you know, so many people, so many leaders, and so many prophetic voices are releasing the word of the Lord. Actually, since the month of December, they have been releasing the word of the Lord for the year 2024. And that is absolutely awesome. That is wonderful that the body of Christ is releasing the prophetic word, the word of the Lord. And sometimes many people might say, okay, so many people releasing the word of the Lord. What am I... What do I supposed to uh, do? 
Which one is the word of the Lord? This one is saying one thing. This one is saying another thing. What do I do? Well, it is the Holy Spirit within you that will witness. It will witness within you. This is what I'm to receive. And I'm not saying that what you are not receiving because there was no witnessing in your spirit. It doesn't mean necessarily, it doesn't mean that it's false, but rather that that's not a word for you at this moment. And of course, we are to test every word that is being released. Every word that I release, you must test it. Every word that anybody else releases, you must test it. As we know, it is written, we are to do that. So you are to seek the Holy Spirit and say, okay, this word is for me. I receive it in Jesus' mighty name. So I honor all those that have been releasing prophetic words and some release prophetic words that are so long and maybe very profound. Uh, but what matters is that we don't want to put ourselves in a point where we are comparing ourselves with others or trying to compare somebody's release prophetic release with somebody else's prophetic release and think that one is better than the other but rather is the same spirit the bible says it is the same spirit that flows through every one of the gifts it is one spirit and is holy spirit and we are not to despise prophecy but to test prophecy and take hold of that that is good hallelujah are you excited i'm looking forward to it i just i felt the presence of god i felt all this spiritual emotions if i can say mix within me of joy and trying and laughter and then like the presence of god just the heat of god just falling upon me on my face on my head especially on my face i feel it hot right now and so i'm excited so here is my part here is the part that god gave me what he placed in my heart to share with the body of christ so are you ready so before I start, I want to say hello to Patricia. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for being part of this broadcast. I will release the word of the Lord now. I would like for you to join me to Genesis chapter 18 and Genesis chapter 21 through 22. So I'm going to share right now my screen. I want to share my screen with you. So when the spirit of the Lord, I ask the Lord, because uh, I am listening to other people's prophetic word for the year. But see, we, we are to know how to separate what others are speaking with what the Lord is speaking to you. So that you're not being a copycat. <laughs> Sometimes we build upon other prophetic words when the Holy Spirit tells us. But it's a good practice to, yes, receive other people's prophetic words, but also receive directly a word from the Lord. So I want to share with you right now my screen, and hopefully you will be able to see the scripture that I want to share with you. I'm going to try to, to see if I can, uh, I'm trying to see where the screen is. Do you see it? I hope that you're seeing the prophetic, the, the, the scripture. I'm trying to make it smaller so that you can actually see it bigger. Is that better? Can you see better? Okay, let's start. So the spirit of the Lord says to me, when, um, when I ask him, Lord, what is the word for this year? What is the word of the Lord for year 2024? And I heard clearly the year of visitation. And I began to have a couple of visions. One of them is uh, I saw Abraham under the tree. We see this story on Genesis chapter 18. Abraham was visited by God when he was sitting under a tree. The Bible calls the oaks of um, 
man ray. So let's read Genesis chapter 18 because within this scripture, the word of the Lord is released. Genesis chapter 18 says, Now the Lord appeared. Is everybody with me? Okay, good. I see Stacy there. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, Stacy. Yay. So I'm placing in here the screen so that you can read with me. And if you didn't hear it because you were taking a mini nap for a moment, <laughs> I'm going to repeat it again. Genesis chapter 18. We are reading Genesis chapter 18. Somebody say Genesis chapter 18. All right. Now, the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Manre while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. When he raised his eyes and looked, behold, three men were standing opposite him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed down to the ground and said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and make my, yourself comfortable under the tree. And I will bring a piece of bread so that you might refresh yourselves. After that, you might go on since you have visited your servants. Somebody say on the chat, visit me, Lord. And they said, so do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly prepare three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make bread cakes. Abraham also ran to the herd and took a tender and choice calf and gave it to the servant, and he hurried to prepare it. He took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared, and he set it before them. And he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. Verse 9. Then they said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. He said, I will certainly return to you at this time next year. And behold, your wife, Sarah, will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advancing age. Sarah was past childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have become old, am I to have pleasure? My Lord being old also. But the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Saying, shall I actually give birth to a child when I am so old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. At this time, next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah denied it, however, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. Going to stop there for a moment. What is God saying through this scripture? That just like Abraham was visited by the Lord, that he's calling his people to be prepared for this year of visitation. He wants you to be prepared to receive that and receive that impartation, that anointing of entertainment. And what do I mean with entertainment? To entertain God. Get God's attention. I can feel in my heart the longing and the desire that God has for every one of us, the body of Christ, to be willing and desire 
to be prepared for the visitation of the Lord. Abraham was sitting under a tree. Usually when they were sitting under a tree, they were like contemplating. They were like meditating. So as we sit before the Lord, as we are meditating on his word, as we are meditating in him, we are preparing ourselves for a visitation. Let your imagination become holy imagination for the glory of God. For you to open the door to the Lord, to invade your, visit, your imagination, to invade your body, soul, and spirit. Your spirit is already one with him. But to, for him to come, prepare him a table. This is the time that the Lord is longing for his people to set a table for him. He already set up a table for you, for us. But he's calling his people to prepare a table for him, to prepare the bread, to bring the meat. What God is looking at is our giving. What is the value? What, what is so valuable to us that we desire to give to the Lord by the leading of the Holy Spirit? I believe that the Lord is opening the ears and the eyes of his people to recognize their time of visitation. The Lord is opening the eyes and the ears of his people to recognize the time of visitation so that they will not miss the blessing of the Lord and communing with God like never before. Yes, the spirit of God is inside of us. The kingdom of the Lord, the presence of God is inside of us. But yet, a visitation of the Lord is impactful in everyone. In everyone's life, in our lives. So the Lord is saying, I will come and visit you. Would you prepare a table for me? Would you offer a sacrifice for me? And that sacrifice, it doesn't mean an actual, you know, shedding of blood, but rather bringing the table of communion in reverence and recognize the holiness of God and begin to give to God in a sacrificial manner by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm not asking for an offering here. This is the word of the Lord that I'm sharing. So the Lord is longing for this time of visitation. He is looking forward to visit his people in this time. For he says, the spirit of the Lord says, for those that are visited by me, for those that are setting up a table for me, for those that are in my presence, they are indeed under the covering of my wings. And the manifestation of Psalm 91 is active in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And the spirit of God says, just like Sarah, that she thought, that she already passed shall bury. The spirit of the Lord says many have lost hope thinking that they will not be able to give birth to a ministry, that they will not be able to give birth to a business because they feel that their time is over, that they are too old, that they have waited too long. But the spirit of the Lord says, I'm visiting you. I'm visiting you and I'm causing you to receive a seed for you to conceive that ministry, to conceive that business, to conceive that, what I have called you to do in the mighty name of Jesus. But if you are with me in the secret place, says the Lord, you will indeed conceive as I visit you in the mighty name of Jesus. My presence will hover over you and you shall conceive in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. There is an increase of faith. There is a rising within the body of Christ by the spirit of the living God, because God is here telling you tonight that you are not here just with the same faith that you started when you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, but that you have grown, that your faith is greater than ever before, and that there is a double measure of faith coming upon you, a faith that will ignite you to see, a faith that will ignite you to hear like never before, so that you will not miss your time of visitation for he who began a good work in you will bring it into completion says the lord thank you god hallelujah hallelujah so the spirit of god says do not lose hope do not lose lose hope i will keep reading the scripture here verse 16 then the man rose up from there and looked down towards Sodom and Abraham was walking with them to send them off. The Lord said, watch this. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Since Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation and in him, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I'm here to announce and to proclaim and to decree that the United States of America will be visited by the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. This year, 2024, in the mighty name of Jesus, America will be visited by the Lord. As we, the body of Christ, set up a table for the Lord and offer sacrifices and set ourselves in a position of meditation in the Lord. Submitting ourselves before the Lord. Believing God. Because he will reveal the mysteries. To those that are willing. To receive the visitation of the Lord. To those that recognize the visitation of the Lord. They will hear the mysteries of God. They will hear the mysteries of God for this nation. The plans that God has for this nation. The strategic plans that God has of intercession for the United States of America. Not only personally, which it is important, but personally, business-wise, for the body of Christ and for the United States of America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is coming to visit his people, not with judgment, but with resolutions, with reformation, with transformation, with revival, with an infusion of power and grace, because he's clothing us for the next season. This is a time of visitation. Thank you, Father. And we continue to read here. Verse 18, since Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, do not forget Israel. Do not forget Israel. Bless Israel and you shall be blessed, says the Lord. Verse 19, for I have chosen him so that he might command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord, keep the way of the Lord, declare and decree and prophesy, America shall keep the way of the Lord. America shall keep the way of the Lord. America shall keep the way of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy that as for me and you and our households and the body of Christ, we shall know the ways of God. We shall know the ways of God and the acts of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Not only his ways, but his acts also in the name of Jesus. That we will recognize the form, the shape in which the Lord will appear to us. And the Lord says, do not underestimate the way that I will manifest my visitation.
but I will come in a dream. I will come in a vision. I will appear to you, to you. I will send my messengers, my angels, and through them you will have a visitation. Because the Spirit of God says, this is the year of visitation. Visitation from me, and I will be sending visitation, visitation from my holy angels. The Lord is releasing his holy angels to visit the land of America and the body of Christ globally. And those that have been in prisons due to persecution, I see that some of them, those, those prisons will be wide open for the people to come out because the angel of the Lord will shake it with a earthquake and he shall open up the doors of those prisons and the people shall come out in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 19, for I have chosen him so that he might command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. So that the Lord might bring upon Abraham what he has spoken about him. And the Lord said, the outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great. Here is the word of the Lord. The outcry of the United States of America is great. The outcry of the United States of America is indeed great. Many don't have food. Many don't have basic resources. Some people have lost their homes. But hear the word of the Lord. Our God have heard our cry. This is the word of the Lord. Our God has heard our cry and he is going to respond somebody says the lord has heard my cry the spirit of god says for you have been waiting for some promises that i have given you and like sarah and abraham you were getting weary on waiting many of you says the lord you have been getting weary in waiting but the way that you wait matters, says the Lord. The way, the way that you are waiting matters. The way that you are responding to the waiting matters. Use your waiting for a time of worship. Use your waiting for a time of meditation. Use your waiting to fill your cup with oil. This is the word of the Lord for 2024, the year of visitation. As we are covered with the wind, wings of the Almighty, the outcry of the United States of America has been heard. The outcry of the nations, I see, I see Turkey, I see Egypt. The people of God in these nations are crying out to the Lord. I see the people from Peru jumping, crying out. They are standing and jumping, crying out to the Lord. The cry of the people is being heard by the Lord. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, do not stop the cry. Get louder. Get louder. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 21, I will go down now and see whether they have done entirely as the outcry which has come to me indicates. And if not, I will know. Here's the word of the Lord. The land of the United States of America and the nations have been crying out for justice. And the spirit of God says, I am releasing justice. I am releasing justice and I'm leveling the scales, says the Lord. Righteousness and justice and mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
We give you praise, God. We give you praise. Verse 22 says, Then the men turned away from, from there and went towards Sodom. While Abraham was still standing before the Lord, Abraham approached and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous. And he starts speaking, and, and we call it interceding for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know this story, and I will not read all this scripture now, but I'm here to tell you that is, there is a greater anointing of intercession that is falling upon the people of the United States of America because the Spirit of God says, for you are not just pregnant with intercession for yourself, but you are pregnant for intercession for the nations of the world, says the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Spirit of God says, for I'm making you accountable for the intercession that I have place in the inside of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of God says, for I am shifting the intercession. I am shifting the intercession from just intercession to a holy intercession, to an intercession that you will enter where you will reach a point where you will not even understand the realm in which you are standing at that moment, says the Lord. You will enter into this atmosphere and, and of intercession that you will say, Lord, I'm saying these things and I'm interceding these things, but I don't completely comprehend it because I see it in the realm of the spirit that is bigger than you and me. This intercession and this power anointing that the Lord has imparted in us and is releasing upon us of intercession is greater than we are. We are inside that power. It's not like it's in us. We are completely in it and immersed into this power of intercession that the Lord is giving us in order for us to intercede for the nation of the United States of America and for the nations of the world. And the Spirit of God says, for you have been distracted only with your personal situations. But I'm here to tell you, says the Lord, that I have heard your cry. But I want you now to begin to also begin to intercede for those that are around you, for those that are in your workplace, for those that are here in the community, for the leaders of the nation. I'm calling you to place your face on the ground as Elijah did, that he went on the ground and he positioned himself in a position with his head on the ground. Bending over with his head on the ground, interceding, praying for the rain to come. The Spirit of God says, do not stop praying until you see the manifestation of it. And then rejoice, says the Lord, for, I, for you will see. You will see. And the people will rejoice, says the Lord. When you begin to see the answers of the Lord that come from heaven. And the Spirit of God says, for you feel sometimes that only if somebody else prays for you, that the prayer request will be answered. The Spirit of God says, I am coming against that idolatry. I am coming against that spirit of idolatry from the land, from the body of Christ, says the Lord. I am breaking, I am breaking that shield of idolatry that the enemy has placed before my people, says the Lord. For you have as much access as the leaders of the body of Christ. You have access, says the Lord, but yet the power of agreement will manifest like never before. Do not put yourself down, says the Lord, for you have direct access with me. You have direct, direct access to me, says the Lord. Do not fear. Do not worry. Do not waste your time in worry. But know that the future that I have for you is so much greater. And this is your time of visitation, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I want to share now that 
one of the other visions that the Lord was giving me. Come on, give some, give some uh, um, images in there, expressing prophetically what the Lord is placing in your heart. The Spirit of God says that those wandering around in the wilderness, not knowing what to do, they will have a visitation from the Lord. Symbolically, they will have their burning bush experience. They will have their burning bush experience. Say it on the chat. Lord, give me a burning bush experience. They will hear God and they will be commissioned to perform radical miracles and wonders with the authority that God has given them as I see the staff on their hand as with Moses. They are sent ones with great authority to subdue serpents and plagues and cast demons out of people, suffering, afflictions, convulsions, being tormented by demons. There is a great deliverance. And the Lord says, for you have seen the deliverance that I have released in the last couple of years. For I am restoring it, says the Lord. But this is a greater measure because I'm moving from from greater to greater to greater, you will see the greater manifestation now. The great portion of deliverance anointing will begin to manifest through every one of them. Those that the Lord will visit it symbolically as Moses with a burning bush experience. Hear me now. I said symbolically. I'm not saying that people will see directly like Moses did. But it could be in a vision. It could be in a dream. Whatever the Lord wants to do. I'm not God. He chooses how to appear to his people. But he says great portion of deliverance anointing will begin to manifest through them for the glory of God. Because the glory of God will be displayed. And they will display the glory of God. They will display who Jehovah God is is they will not just know about him or hear about him they will not just hear about him but they will really get to see who he is i see the casting out of demons taking place at a stadium and at a sport event full of people. And I see this man casting out demons out of one person right there in the stadium on the sport event. And the spirit of God says that they might know that I am God, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And one of the other visions that the Lord gave me, I saw when I said, Lord, what do you have for us during this year of visitation? How are you going to manifest your visitation? And I saw in a vision the four living creatures. And as soon as I say this, the four living creatures, the anointing just increase. The four living creatures. It is a time of visitation where the four living creatures will come and they will actually terrorize the people in a holy way because the sound that emanates from the wings is loud. And I heard, like at a distance, the sound of the wings of the four living creatures. I hear the sound of the wings of the living creatures. And they will appear similar to the experience that Ezekiel had, Ezekiel the prophet. So some will be visited by the Lord through the four living creatures. And those that will be visited will be many and will be commissioned and clothed with power. Yes, we have received the Holy Spirit, but there is a, a power, a, a great measure that will come, more power, more power and great boldness in the body of Christ. 
and they will release the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And while I was seeing this, I saw the United States and the, and the eyes of the Lord went to the state of California. And I saw California and I see some of the people being commissioned and clothed with power and great boldness to speak and defend righteousness on the land of California. The entire state of California, I, I, I saw it in this vision surrounded by the golden presence of the Lord all around the boundaries of California, surrounded by the presence of the Lord is really the glory of God surrounding California. And I see quite the spiritual horses, a group of horses. It was a small group of horses. And I want to show you, I want to show you I'm going to share my screen with you so that you will see. I want to share with you. So I saw, hold on guys. So for those that are joining right now, number one, I share about the visitation of Abraham. When the Lord came to Abraham and visited, the Lord came to Abraham to visit him. We share that prophetic word already. We are talking about the year of visitation, the year of visitation. Now we are talking about Ezekiel. We were talking about the visitation of Ezekiel and the four living creatures. Are you seeing the screen? And Ezekiel had a visitation. And I shared with you about the four living creatures, the visitation, and then the wheel within a wheel, that the presence of God is within the wheels. And we speak of the creatures that God will send to visit his people, the four living creatures. And I hear the sound of their wings manifesting, releasing the sound of heaven, terrorizing the enemy. The enemy has no choice but to bow. It is the visitation of the Lord that we are receiving in this time and season, and we are preparing ourselves to present sacrifices and finding creative ways with the Holy Spirit to receive a visitation, to prepare an atmosphere for the Lord. Hallelujah. When you're going to have your a friend coming to your home to visit you, you clean house. Come on, somebody. You clean house. You bring their favorite food and drinks. You remove the sheets from the bed. You wash them. And you make sure that everything that they need is in that room because they will come to visit. Prepare yourself, says the Lord. Prepare yourself, says the Lord, for this time of visitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I'm sharing about a vision of California. California. Okay. And California was completely and is completely surrounded by the presence of God all around with a golden presence, which is the presence, the glory of God. And as I am sharing with you right now that I see California and the people of the land of California being commissioned, being commissioned and clothed with power and boldness to defend the land to defend the land, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because I see that the righteousness of God will crush the weakness of the land in the mighty name of Jesus, 
Hallelujah. And then I saw right in the middle of the map. I'm going to make this map bigger. Right in the middle of the map. Can you see the map? Somebody speak to me. Right in the middle of the map. And the Lord guide me and he showed me the county called San Joaquin or Joaquin. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. In Spanish will be San Joaquin. And this area, this area right here, do you see it? Okay. So this area right here is where the Lord showed me where the spiritual horses are located in the middle of California. A spiritual horses, somebody put white horses on, or horses on the, on the images. The Lord showed me in a vision, white horses right in the middle of California in the county of San Joaquin, San Joaquin. Now, I saw, I, I saw the map in the spirit, and then I, I look it up on the internet, and I located the place that God was showing me, and that is spot is exactly San, San Joaquin or San Joaquin. And the spiritual horses began to run to the north and to different directions. But I saw a white horse specifically. My eyes went to a horse that was going to the northwest of California. These are angelic beings that the Lord is sending throughout the land of California. And I saw that group of horses in a vision. And after I saw, saw them group, then they were released across the land. Now, I want you to hear me very, very clearly. I didn't see riders on the white horses. It was only the horses. The horses represent the strength. They are creatures of God that the Lord is releasing across the land. Now, the Lord prompted me to look for the meaning of San Joaquin. San means saint. But the Lord highlighted to me to look for Joaquin. That word Joaquin, I want to show you a screenshot of what Joaquin means. I want you to look at the screen and look with me so that you know that I'm not making this thing up. Okay, you have to look it up too, right? So you can go to a website ca called Think Babies Names. Think Baby Names. <laughs> Think Baby Names. And okay, I want you guys to show me that you are alive, that you're still there, that you didn't fall asleep. Come on, don't fall asleep on me. Come on, drink some coffee, get your water, put some anointing oil. We are eating every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We are eating every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I welcome V, my sister V. Great to see you, Amber. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you precious women are here. I see Juliet. Welcome, Juliet. So good to see you. Praise the Lord. We continue with the word of the Lord. And so God says, the white spiritual horses are located at San Joaquin County in California, right in the middle of the map. And the word Joaquin, the word Joaquin is a name for a boy and the root is in Hebrew. And the Joaquin means, are you ready? Established by God. Joaquin is a, an alternative form of Jehoiakim in Hebrew. And it's an elaborated form of Joachim, Joachim, 
and it's also queen. So I want you to hang there. So it means established by God. These horses are being released to establish God's purposes on the land of California. Established by God. These horses have been established by God to go forth to establish what God desires for the land of California. And I see that the people that he has, and, and not see, but the Lord is impressing in my heart that the people that he's clothing with power and giving them great boldness to defend the land of California, they are established by God. Rabba Soto Koroboshe Say, establish me, God. Establish me, God. This word is for you too. Yes, this word is for you too. And God is releasing an emphasis in California. But yes, receive it that you are established by God into what he has called you to do. Hallelujah. Now, I stay with me. Established by God. Now, the Lord prompted me to see the meaning of the word king. Q u i n i want to show you that screen and why am i showing you that because that is like the female version of that name i'm going to show uh, i'm going to show it to you q u i n q u i n so it's right there on your screen right now and what does this mean? What does this mean? So as a boy's name, but it's also used for girls as it's pronounced king. It's pronounced king. It is of Spanish and Hebrew origin. And the meaning of king, are you ready? The meaning of king is counsel. Counsel. So the spirit of God is releasing an impartation of his counsel upon the people that he has established in the land of California for his purposes to defend the land in the mighty name of Jesus. As I see someone already standing on the land of California with a shovel on their hands, ready for what the Lord wants them to do. They are putting hands on. It's not only the praying part, it's not only the interceding part, but there is an action that we as the body of Christ are to take in this part, in this time and beyond, because we are an active body. See, the human body is not only sitting in one place and we are waiting for everybody to bring our food. No, 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 no. We are moving. We are moving our arms. We are walking from one place to another. We are doing things with our body. And that's exactly what the Lord is doing in this time and in the future more than ever before because we are indeed established by the Lord. He has clothed us with power. That's what he's saying. He's clothing us with greater power and greater boldness to go and defend the land. And the land means everything that is on the land, the children, the humans, the, the animals. And he is giving us his counsel because the spirit of God says, for you are worried about what to say, but I am the Lord, your God, and I will place in your mouth the words that you are to say, for I will bring you before great people. I will bring you before those that are very important and have positions of authority. And you think, but Lord, I am inadequate. I don't know how to speak. But the Lord says, didn't I create that tongue? Didn't I cause you to speak? Didn't I, didn't, didn't, was it not me the one that gave you that voice, that sound? So the spirit of God says, I will touch your tongue right now. And I will put the words that I want in your tongue. So now open up your mouth that I will feel it, say it the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
And Tisha says that she just read this about, did you just read it now or you read it before? Joaquin um, in California, praise, praise as a breadbasket. The San Joaquin Valley is a major source of food producing a significant part of California's agricultural output. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I didn't know that. I was trying to do some research about what their main source of income is, um, but I didn't have time to look it up. But praise the Lord. Awesome. Awesome. So the Lord is releasing his counsel, establishing his people for the works of expansion of the kingdom and defending the land. Hallelujah. So now we are talking about a time of visitation. A time of visitation. A time of visitation. Abraham had a time of visitation. Do not miss your time of visitation. The Lord is opening your eyes and your ears for you to receive your time of visitation. And the Spirit of God was speaking to me concerning the visitation. And the Spirit of God says, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 25. And I'm going to share that scripture, but I would like for you to also post on the comments, if possible, please. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. Matthew 25, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. And everybody's familiar with this uh, parable. Are you ready? Here is the instruction for you to be successful on your time of visitation and in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to get his church. Did you hear me? I'm gonna say it one more time because I feel the weight of the glory of God right in my belly. He's saying, I want you to be prepared. And this is the how preparation for your time of visitation and for the coming of the Lord of Jesus Christ. I am not saying that Jesus is coming to take his church in 2024. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this is the year of visitation from the Lord and from his angelic host and from his four, from his four living creatures and that this instruction that I'm about to tell you is preparation for the coming of the Lord. So join me to read Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. It's not very long, so we can definitely read it together right now. Do you see it? All right. Matthew 25, then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. Stop right there. 50% were foolish and 50% were prudent. Could it be that that's an a statistic Possibly in the body of Christ, 50% foolish and 50% prudent. <laughs> For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil with them. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil with them. I'm here to proclaim and to decree that the Lord is coming to visit those that have the extra oil. The Lord is coming to visit those that have the extra oil. And those are the ones that are significant 
during the coming of the Lord. So you are not just to have oil, but to have extra oil. Why do you need the extra oil? I'm going to tell you on the next verse. The Bible says right here on verse 2. They did not take extra oil with them. It says, for when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil with them. But the prudent ones took oil in flash, flasks with their lamps. Listen to that. The prudent ones took oil in flasks with their lamps. So let us be wise and not only have oil for us, but have extra oil. Now, when, now, while the groom was delaying, somebody say delaying, so that represents the waiting, while we are waiting for the time of visitation, while we are waiting for the time of visitation, come on, when we are waiting for the time of visitation, we are filling ourselves with oil, and we are getting extra oil. We are preparing ourselves for visitation and for the coming of the Lord. While we are waiting, we are responsible for what we do in the waiting. They all became drowsy and began to sleep, the Bible says. But at midnight, that means that during that time of tribulation, during a time of uh, difficulties, at midnight, there finally was a child. Behold, the groom come out to meet him. Come out to meet him. Behold, the groom come out to meet him. So when we less expect it, the Lord, the time of visitation will come. May we be found with oil and not only with with uh, oil, but with the extra oil so that we do not run out during the waiting. Hallelujah. Then verse seven, then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish virgins said to the prudent ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Our lamps are going out. The Bible says that the spirit of man is the, is the candle of the Lord. May you be found with fire because you indeed have oil in your lamp. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. However, the prudent ones answer, no, there must certainly would not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourself. I'm here to tell you that there is people that they are still in the church, that they are in the church or they go to other churches just looking for somebody to possibly lay hands on them and impart that anointing, which there is nothing wrong with an impartation. Listen, I'm still giving the word of the Lord. It is good to receive an impartation. But the spirit of God is saying, you are not getting the fullness of the oil of the other person. Get your own oil. Get your own oil. And I see in the realm of the spirit, that some of you are running to get the oil, to get oil for yourself. Hallelujah. May your lamp, our lamp, do not run out of oil, but have extra oil. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, what am I? I think I'm on verse 10 now. But while they were on, the, on their way to buy the oil, the groom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut. 
the door was shut. Remember, this is the year of the open door. We don't, we don't want the doors that God has for us to be shut because we run out of oil. What is the oil? What is oil? How do we get oil? We get oil by spending time with the Lord, by reading of the word in worship, in praise, in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Fasting. Not only doing, but actually with faith. That is the key. It's not, it's not just the doing, but the faith. Hallelujah. Blessings to you, Shaquille. I see you. Blessings to you. Stacy, blessings to you. Let there be oil on your lamps so that you will be fine, you will be found with oil, so that your doors will not be shut. The, the oil is the empowerment of God. Declare, I am anointed and established by God. I am anointed and established by God. Hallelujah. And then it says, yet later, the other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, because you do not know the day nor the hour. I declare and I decree that we will be prepared for the visitations, visitations of the Lord. And that we will be prepared for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Let there be oil in your lamp. Let there be oil in your lamp. Let there be oil on your lamp like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to share with you. I'm going to stop sharing that screen right now. Are you still there with me? I see your comments. I'm, I, I am anointed and established by God, you say. I am anointed and established by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God qualifies me. I am anointed and established by God. God qualifies me. Hallelujah. We are not waiting for somebody to qualify us. God has qualified you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the spirit of the living God. I honor you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your word. Now, I want to share with you that once the Lord showed me the vision of the virgins and the oil, and he, he, he spoke to me about this scripture, Matthew chapter 25. Then he showed me in a vision, a pure gold oil being poured like a waterfall into a river flow. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say, get into the river flow. Get into the river flow of the anointing of the oil. Because where the river is, the Lord is getting ready to pour gold oil, meaning more of the oil of the Lord is going to be poured into the river of oil that is already flowing. So who you are connected with matters. If there is no oil flowing, where is the oil flowing? I'm not telling you to leave your church. I'm saying, where is the oil? Where is the oil? You have oil, you have extra oil, but the river speaks of the body of Christ. Those that as a body are flowing with the oil. And, and it doesn't become just a little oil, but a river of oil, the oil of the Lord. Hallelujah, pure gold oil, fresh, is about to be released 
from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that oil has an aroma in the realm of the spirit. There is a freshness to it. It is fresh oil. And the spirit of God, after this, he showed me an olive tree. And the olive tree was beautiful. It had a golden presence all about it. This beautiful presence all around it. Surrounded with this golden presence, which is the glory of God. This olive tree is representing Israel. Yes, I'm still prophesying. This is the time of visitation. Because the Lord is visiting Israel and is covering it with his glory. But you say right now is war. There is a fight going on in Israel. But I'm here to just proclaim and to decree to you what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and not what I'm seeing in the natural. Hallelujah. If I go based on what I see on the natural, I will not be speaking the word of the Lord. I will be just giving my opinion of what I see in the natural. But the spirit of God says the olive tree is representing Israel that is surrounded by the golden presence, the Shekinah glory, the, the glory of God all around it. That same glory that filled the temple of Solomon is the same glory that is surrounding and filling Israel. And the spirit of God says Israel will be scratching, listen to this, Israel will be scratching because Israel is being anointed by the Lord and being covered with this presence. Once again. So the Lord is getting ready to use Israel to scratch the itch when others can't scratch themselves. Israel, what does this mean? Israel is going to scratch somebody else's itch because they cannot reach themselves and scratch themselves. This is a parable. And what does that mean? I saw in a vision medical assistance coming from Israel. And I saw the antidote in a clear bottle in the realm of the spirit. And it looked like uh, like an injection, like the liquid, like small containers of injections, you know, like before they actually put the injection in, they are very small and then they put the injection and they take the liquid out. I don't know how to call that, but it looks like an injection, you know, like a liquid container for an injection. And the Lord is going to use Israel to release this medical assistance. I saw the pharmaceutical companies and I saw them. I saw a shelf of bottles of medicine being filled. And I'm hearing the Lord right now say, be prepared with your medications. Be prepared with your medications. Do not wait until something happens to see if you have your medications or what you need. But I see right now, the Lord was showing me the bottles of medicines on a shelf and then they were being filled, um, they were being filled with pills and then they were being placed inside of a uh, typical, you know, prescription medicine storage, if I can call it. I'm trying to describe what I'm seeing. Uh, uh, storage. Why does this matter? Because the eyes of the Lord are on the pharmaceutical companies in the mighty name of Jesus. The eyes of the Lord are on the pharmaceutical companies in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Because I saw, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the billboard sign of Pfizer falling to the ground. And with the impact, dust went everywhere. And I heard the word of the Lord, those who have exalted themselves 
will be brought low in the mighty name of Jesus. So now, children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High God, hear the word of the Lord. Position yourself to receive that visitation from the Lord. Fill your cups with oil and extra oil and more. And the, with the oil of gladness, with the oil of the Lord, with the oil that destroys the, the yoke and removes burdens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be encouraged because the Lord is excited to come to see you, to come to visit you. Hallelujah. And I, I'm here to proclaim and to decree, do not get weary in well-doing. Do not get weary in the waiting. But use your time to receive more of the oil of the Lord. As I see the importance in the realm of the spirit of who you are connected with, there must be oil. Because I see that some of you, you have oil, but then you just hang out with somebody that is like a sponge and it tries to suck the oil out of you. There is a difference between taking away from somebody than you laying hands and praying and releasing that oil over somebody. There is a difference. Do not run dry of oil. Keep your lamps with oil. Keep them burning before the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a vision right now of the menorah. And this is fixed of the seven spirits of God, which the Lord is going to manifest in 2024. And I see them. I see the map of the United States and I see the land being marked or the way they, they like, how can I say? The Lord is designating sections to every spirit of God. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of the living God first, the spirit of the living God. From west to east, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is hitting the East Coast. The spirit of the fear of the Lord is hitting the East Coast in the mighty name of Jesus. And I see that once the Lord is releasing the seven spirits of God in seven parts across the United States, I see the fire of God coming from the south of the United States, the South, Southwest, Southeast, all the way up. And it sets the whole nation on gold fire. That is revival, my friends. That is the great revival that God has in the last days. And we say, do it, Lord, and double it. Do it, Lord. Here I am. Use me. Here I am. I'm established by you. Here I am. Send the four living creatures. And that is the word of the Lord, my friends. And I finish right there. I finish right there. I don't even know how long I have been here. One hour and 17 minutes, 18 minutes. And I see the comments right now. I see uh, B says... Um, uh, yes, that we are to be prepared with medications. And uh, also that she, she saw that, that one of the Pfizer facilities is supposed to be closing. Oh, wow, the warehouse from the 15501. And I promise I haven't read the news. Honestly, I have not read the news. I have been so busy that I actually checked the weather the day before I actually, you know, like the same day, I just checked the weather that day and I'm like, okay, what can I wear today? And that's it. Whatever is close to me. Okay. That doesn't require iron. That's it. Okay. <laughs> My life is simple. 
But um, so uh, it seems that they are closed in a warehouse. Yes, the, the fear of the Lord, the glory of God to be released on the East Coast. I like that, overtaken by God. It's being overtaken by God in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I agree with you, Patricia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let there be oil on your lamp. Don't let it run dry. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I think I remember that one. And B says that uh, Pfizer warehouse in Rockingham uh, caught on fire several months ago. Jesus. So now I share the word of the Lord that God placed in my heart and even a little bit more because he was giving me some things while I was sharing. But I, but the Lord is speaking into your heart as well. And I would like for you to also share on the comments, you know, uh, not only now, but even after we finish with the broadcast for you to share what, what is God telling you? What is God putting in your heart? Put it in one sentence. What is God telling you in your heart? I want to hear what God has put in your heart too. It matters because he's speaking to his people. Hallelujah. So let us pray. And, I, and we finish. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your prophetic word. We thank you for the time of visitation. We ask God that you lead us, that you help us, God, to set up a table for you, to prepare a room for you, for you to come and visit us, Lord. Yes, you dwell in the inside of us, but you are getting ready to overtake us all the way around. And we are looking forward to it, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask that you give us the grace to be fasting. Give us the grace to be in prayer like never before. Give us the grace to intercede in part what you have spoken upon us tonight, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive, O oh God, with gratitude your word, Lord. We honor your written word, your rhema word, your Holy Spirit. We honor you, Father. We honor all those that have been releasing the true word of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We ask that you set us aflame, for we are, we are, you, our spirit is your candle. And we ask God that you set our candles aflame like never before. Help us not to be found without oil. Help us not to be found without the extra oil. Help us do not to be found without fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Use us for your glory. We thank you for establishing us. Reveal your mysteries unto us. Let our ears hear the wondrous things that you are planning to do here on the earth and on the nations, on the United States, and on the nations of the world. Help us do not to be complacent like the five foolish virgins, but help us to be wise and make wise decisions daily. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, help us to be committed, to be filled with oil to overflow, that we will not lack fire, and that we will be found prepared during the time of visitation and in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that you cover us all with your presence, with the blood of Jesus. Help us to ponder as Mary, the mother of Jesus did, with every message that you send her way. I ask that you cause us to ponder on the messages that you're sending our way, that you help us to ponder on this prophetic word, the year of visitation that you're giving us tonight. We give you thanks. We love you. We are so looking forward to what you're doing here on the earth and in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, my friends, I didn't see any comments about what is the Lord telling you. Even, even after I finish the broadcast, I will go back and look it up. I want to see what is God telling you. For those who are in prophetic community, please share. What is God placing in your heart for the year 2024? Sometimes we think that a prophetic word has to be very long, you know, that it has to be like, eight uh, paragraphs or something but it doesn't have to be long it doesn't have to sound like all super profound no just be you just be just share what god puts in your heart amen so if you are in prophetic community 
on our private group, Prophetic Community. Share in there the scripture the God is putting in your heart. Share a short message. Whatever the Lord has put in your heart, just go ahead and share it. Put a video there or, um, uh, or the written message, a picture that conveys what God is telling you for 2024. Because a picture also speaks a thousand words. So share. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being part of this broadcast. I appreciate your prayers, your participation, and, and your agreement because we have come and gathered together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ tonight. So if you feel that, that if you feel in your heart that you are not right with God, I encourage you to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sins though known and unknown. I just ask that you wash me with the blood of Jesus. I recognize that I belong to you and that nothing can separate me from your love. And I crush under my feet every lie of the enemy that has been attacking me, saying that I'm separated from you, that, that, um, that I'm not worth it, that I'm not going to heaven, or that I'm not um, worthy. So, Father, I crush those and, and those lies of the enemy under my feet. And I receive the truth that I am so loved by you, that I'm established by you, that I am chosen by you, that I am anointed by you, and that the plan that you have for me is so amazing, is beyond my imagination. And you desire every good thing for me. You already wrote down so many things that will manifest in my life. And I'm looking forward to that, Lord. Lead my steps and guide me into all truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Blessings to you, friends. You have a good night. I'm looking forward to the next. Bye-bye.